hello viewers in today's class i am going to discuss on optical fiber structure and its working principle as in previous class i have discussed on fundamental block diagram of optical fiber as a continuation for that we are going to see on the fiber structure as well as its working principle now see this is the fundamental basic structure for optical fiber here we can see three major parts are present uh, the thing you can watch here in white color is called as core followed by cladding and it is followed by outer covering uh, this part is called as outer jacket this is especially designed for protection of this optical fiber so actually this optical fiber is simply a cylindrical dielectric waveguide see why we are calling it as cylindrical just looking the structure i think you can understand why we are calling it like that why we are calling it as waveguide means see usually waveguide is used for allowing the signals in a some guided path here also the same thing happens whatever the signals that are going to propagate inside this fiber will be along one particular guided path so it is also another way called as waveguide and in this the transmission takes place in the form of light so the basic parts we are having are just core followed by cladding and an outer jacket this is sometimes called as buffer also and the fundamental material we are going to use in this are dielectrics here this uh, size or uh, simply we can call the diameter of this fiber will be just equal to the thickness of a human hair see how smaller it is just thickness of a human hair so now we will go uh, step by step here the material used for preparation of this optical fibers is usually glass or plastic we have two choices generally the fibers made up of glass are very strong and which are made up of plastic are not as much uh, harder or stronger than glass materials based on applications they will choose either of the material and uh, glass based fibers uh, are very very popular mostly they will be preferred this glass type of fibers now we will go into the next one see for understanding the working principle of optical fiber i want to just uh, uh, recall back some fundas in physics in that what we uh, know is usually just if you take the concept of light rays how the light rays generally propagate everyone of us know light rays will travel in straight line path right but if uh, for you go for practical application what we need if we suppose say we are uh, staying at some nasha pat or some area right and we need to transmit our signal to some guntur so here some hundreds of kilom some kilometers of distance they have to travel so in this case is it possible to have a straight fiber from here to here just think over even worldwide if you want to put a communication network is it possible to have straight fiber not possible but here the light is travel in straight line so as a solution for this the concept of total internal reflection came out where your optical fiber can be bended it can be turned any way it can be designed but the light based on the total internal reflection property this Uh, propagates along this path and reaches the end point so how that is possible how the light is having this property that we will see now we will just recall back here see here i have just taken example of two medias one is water and the second media is air so water and air if you compare these two we know that water is uh, denser medium and air is lighter medium now n1 and n2 are nothing but refractive indexes so refractive index is directly proportional to density of material so straight away we can say here the density n1 sorry the density n1 is greater than n2 nothing but refractive index n1 greater than n2 so if we instant a signal from water medium to air medium whenever there is a change of medium here what has happened see the light ray started bending like this refracted the light ray got refracted actually it has to take this path but a small deviation has occurred and it has refracted like this now so see here in the first case i have taken an incident angle theta 1 in the second case what i have done i have increased the incident angle and made it equal to some critical angle theta c 
whenever you project your light ray with a critical equal to critical angle automatically your light ray bends like this so actually if you observe clearly this is parallel to the incident ray and whenever you go with your theta i incident angle equal to critical angle light rays travel in parallel and if you go for the third case where your incident angle theta 1 or theta i anyway we can say if it is greater than critical angle see what is happening here the light ray instead of traveling or entering into this air medium it got completely or uh, totally reflected back into the same medium this phenomena is called as total internal reflection this phenomena is the basic working principle of our optical fiber from this concept only actually optical fibers are designed that we are going to discuss now so just this is a, a revision what i have taken now see here the structure of optical fiber what are the basic materials we are having already i said core followed by cladding and next uh, this is just outer layer for protection purpose and uh, these can be made up of either glass or plastic already i said see inside the fiber actually how the light rays propagate you just look, look here the path is like zigzag path so the light will be taking some zigzag path and this we call it as total internal reflection why this has happened we are going to see now see here just i have taken a uh, original fiber structure like this with core cladding and outer buffer coating if you insert light from the end it propagate inside like this so that we can clearly understand from this diagram see this diagram clearly here this is core medium and this is cladding so here keep one important point in mind always the refractive index of core should be greater than refractive index of cladding so n1 is the refractive index of core n2 is the refractive index of cladding so whenever already i said whenever the light travels from denser medium to low denser medium that means higher density to lower density automatically there the refraction mechanism takes place that is nothing but your Uh, light rays start bending the same thing is going to happen here but as a step ahead of that here one more point we have to keep in mind is our angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle theta c if these two basic rules are followed automatically in optical fibers the total internal reflection mechanism takes place so for that look here carefully here we have made a cone cone shaped angle called as acceptance angle or acceptance cone angle see why we have mentioned this here is when you are going to project your uh, incident light or otherwise uh, light rays if you are going to insert your light ray at what angle we need to insert this is very very important factor why because if you are not uh, within the range of uh, light uh, acceptance cone what happens is your light rays what you are going to project will not be inserted into your cable properly see here first point this is one end of the cone this is another end of the cone whatever all the light rays we are going to insert in between this area enter the fiber enter the core like this and they propagate along the core like this and see here something we have shown in red line and this is out of this acceptance cone what happened to this light ray just see clearly this light ray has been projected like this and it just went out and this is lost radiation that means this is lost in radiation that means that cannot be contributed to our optical fiber so there what has happened simply the propagation it is not followed into this path that is just simply waste of our light ray so here the care should be taken always the inside this cone angle only all the light rays should be projected and always the refractive index of core should be greater than refractive index of cladding if these two rules are followed automatically the light rays start from the end and travel along the path of this optical fiber and they reach at the other end so this is a basic or fundamental principle of the light ray propagation in optical fibers here generally 
this chlorine cladding are made up of silicon dioxide so care should be taken that for example just one example i am showing if n1 value that means refractive index of core i am going to take as 1.5 approximately your cladding refractive index should be 1.46 see here i have not taken much variation little bit variation but that variation itself is essential for us here for uh, having this basic principle of mechanism right keep this point in mind and next see here practically you can see this is an optical fiber see outwards the light will be projected from this end in travels along the path and it will again exit in the form of the light like this and someone if you just have projection of your torch light or something a small light ray usually uh, already i said the type of sources we are going for uh, light sources are led or laser say some laser light is projected at this end see clearly the projector light is green in color that light is propagating inside the fiber like this i have taken some transparent fiber which is uh, appearable for us from outside this transparent fiber we can observe clearly inside the core region the light is taking the path like this that means see first the light falls on the wall of the structure it gets total internally reflected you may get a doubt why the light is getting reflected very simple point here the refractive index of core is higher than the cladding so then automatically what should happen to the light the light gets reflected back and uh, the care what we have taken here is your angle of incidence is greater than critical angle that's why because we have satisfied these two things automatically the light is getting total internally reflected and the phenomena is satisfied okay and here uh, this is one of the structure of our practical uh, optical fiber structure see here this part is called as core and it is uh, follow uh, protected with outer shells like this and this is cladding see here one copper shell we have arranged so actually we know that copper wires can carry the electrical current and what is the purpose of the copper wire in optical cables is very simple see as uh, the distance of propagation is increasing we know that light uh, uh, sorry optical cables will be traveling some hundreds of uh, and thousands of kilometers as the distance is increasing what happens say the signal strength becomes weaker so in order to boost up our signal we need to use amplifier section so for the purpose of operation of these amplifiers this copper shells are used initially itself they will be used for carrying the current and we can connect them to the amplifier sections easily and here this is for the insulation purpose see basically core it is uh, surrounded with cladding and again it is surrounded with some protective shells why we ne need this much of protection is very simple as optical fibers are made up of glass or plastic materials they should be surrounded with huge uh, strengthening materials and they will be laid undergrounds as well as under oceans and seas so they should be protected even from environment also for all these conditions the optical fiber cables are surrounded with huge protection because of this only the cost of the optical fibers is also high compared to our normal uh, coaxial cables and see uh, you can see you can see here these are the bundle uh, of optical cables actually this wire is appearable in outside world inside that wire the arrangement will be like this see each and every thin optical cable is twisted and wounded into a big uh, fiber and uh, these each and every one will be carrying the led or laser lights so this is simply your practical optical fiber and this everyone are aware of is this coaxial cables even uh, for your television transmission in house also you'll be watching this and here this is outer protection cell and comparatively more than this coaxial cables optical fibers give very much protection because they these are um, not affected with electromagnetic interference because of the materials we have used inside this are silicon dioxide and the uh, carrier we are going to use is light because of these reasons optical fiber cables are very much better than compared to coaxial cables okay 
Thank you. Thanks for watching this video.